the fundamentalists are the ones who set her aside, giving a lot of trouble to her. She did not get full justice. But today also International Day of Charity. These three things come together and we place them uh, before as we begin this talk on charity and justice in relationship. As the world continues to focus on how to tackle coronavirus pandemic, for Francis is beginning to think how to resurrect humanity. For him, it is the hope of the future, how to bring the restitution to the humanity and to give them that necessary antibodies of justice, charity and solidarity. He says, if we act as one people, even in the face of other epidemics that lie waiting for us, we can have a real impact. And they included this responsibility against hunger. Now here he says, there is enough food for all in this world. And if you are not able to satisfy them and give them that food, then we do injustice. What we need is our willingness to change the lifestyles and to plunge so many into uh, plunge that so many who are in poverty, we promote them, encourage them, and lead them to a better human life. That is what the Pope wants us to do. He calls it as the globalization of indifference that will continue to threaten our, our attempt, our journey. Hopefully, it will find us with the necessary antibodies to, of justice, charity, and solidarity. His concern is to care for the humanity and bring about justice and charity to all. Now, taking these points now, charity and justice, let us study what exactly is, are these two points for us. We'll start with uh, a small anecdote for the Tony DiMello gives it, you would have read it. Once there were two monks who were walking together and they had to go across across a little rivulet, small river. It was dirty and mucky. So then as you're ready to go, this uh, a young girl there, beautiful, well-dressed, wanted to go across, not want oil or dress. So the young man took a decision, young monk carried her and took her across. And the elder man was frowned while the girl was very happy that a girl, their clothes were not spoiled. After keeping her down there, the old man went on grumbling against this young man and said, don't you know the religious rules? We are not to touch women, we have to keep them far away. We have our norms to follow. And we have been and went on talking for half an hour. When they read the monastery, the young man said, Brother, I left the girl at the riverside, but you are carrying her in your heart. He did the charity, but he could not able to digest what this charity meant to understand people and to give them the goodwill that is what is lacking. This is what Tony says, charity and justice will go hand in hand. We have to go together. Let us now look at the concept of this charity and justice. Primary meaning of charity is the theological virtue by which we love God above all things for his own sake and our neighbor as ourselves for the love of God. And secondarily, it also means concrete acts of generous, generous assistance towards those in need. Now, in the pastoral letter, the United States bishops in the conference says, though different kinds, different in kind from justice, the precepts of charity impose duties which may not disregard. To love the neighbor is not simply a matter of option or a counsel which they may follow who aims at moral perfection. It is a divine command that is equally binding on all. It extends beyond kindred and friends to include everyone. And it is obligatory that for us to think better of others and put ourselves into action. Charity is held to be the ultimate perfection of the human spirit because it is said to both glorify and reflect the nature of God. Confusion can arise from the multiple meanings we have in the word love in English. Or as the other theological virtues, charity is divinely infused into the soul. It resides in the will, as Thomas Aquinas, the greatest of the theologians says, charity is an absolute requirement for happiness, which he holds as man's last goal. 
Charity has two parts, love of God and love of man, which includes both love of one's neighbor and oneself. In 1 Corinthians 13, we have read it often. I just give a little summary of it. Paul places the greatest emphasis on charity. So faith, love remain. Faith, hope and love remain. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Chapter 13, 1 to the end, we find that he gives charities, kind, patient, and all the virtues he will give. Ultimately, he says, fruits of charity are joy, peace, and mercy. And the greatest of these is that love or charity which we ought to have. In the Bible, much like uh, what we would believe today, charity is equated to giving. To be charitable, literally, we would mean to be a giver. In the context of 2 Corinthians 9, the Apostle Paul is talking about money. However, charity is not never limited to money alone in the Bible. Regardless, the Bible does tell us to bless others as much as we can, yet it is done cheerfully, otherwise it is meaningless. Charity in the Bible is oriented towards the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus was the total expression of charity. It is through his love that we see that fullness of charity. He did not worry about his own self or life or career or popularity. What he did care about was the people. In John chapter 15 verse 13, Jesus says, the greater love than this that no one has, then one lays down his life for his friends. And the same breath he says, I lay down my life for you, and it dies on the cross. That is the greatest act of love, the charity that we see. And as you saw it beautifully in 1 Corinthians 13, that it is the aspect of charity which Jesus lived and Paul communicates it to us. Jesus taught that to love God and to love neighbor are the greatest commandments. Charity is a, not an optional extra, but it is an essential component of faith. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, Jesus identifies himself with those who are poor and excluded. He teaches that we will be judged not on how beautiful our altars are, our churches are, our temples are, but the way we treat others. And our neighbor is not just someone who is close to us, next to us. Neighbor is anyone who is in need. And that is what he told in the parable of the Good Samaritan. And he tells it even now today to us. Everyone is who is who can help. They are the ones, neighborless ones maybe, but then we have to help. There's a little anecdote I had read some time ago. I will bring it here. It is here. One man had gone to the fair. You know, the fair is something they call it. And, they, and uh, he had a little bit uh, going around, with a lot of meats and drinks. And he's coming back. It was dark. He slipped and fell and fell into the muck. He tried to come out here sinking and thought he would die. Then to his luck, one man came on his horse, catch chariot, and he saw it, threw a rope at him, and he uh, asked him to tie himself. With the help of his horse, he pulled him out, took him home, treated him well, and then ultimately he was uh, uh, they healed. It took two days for him to recover. Then the man said, now you are well, you go home. Then the man said, sir, may I know your name? He said, why do you want to know my name? No, I can tell others that you help me and I can pray for you. He says, no, I won't give you. Again, the man said, he insisted that he said, okay, tell me, you read the Bible, what is the name of the Good Samaritan? The man thought and said, no, no, my name is not given. You think I am the Good Samaritan, you also be a Samaritan. The charity is to be extended to others. Charity involves, you have to help others, but it may cost you. That is the justice that involves. It extends beyond yourself. Go and do like the Good Samaritan, do like me. The early saints in the church did the same. For them, it was charity was something involving others, the poor. We have an example of St. Lawrence, the deacon. He, he was told to give all the wealth of the church to the Roman emperor. 
and he was the one who gave it to the poor and brought all the poor people to the in front of the emperor said and this is the wealth of the church that was the charity to help others and to show and ultimately what of the justice he got he was killed he was fried and that is what we see here later the church's teaching expresses the love towards others as a solidarity we are one we are one community in which we help therefore the principle that we have when we are called upon to act is the act of love the charity which we all need in the letter to the philippians paul says let nothing be done with a through selfish ambition or conceit philippians chapter 2 or 3 to 4 but in lowliness of mind let each person esteem others better than himself we have to see the other as better than us that is the charity and there's a perfect definition of charity found in the bible we see others as better than ourselves there is something good we search in others we go into the depth of the heart of the other and discover that that is the god who loves us who discover in him something true and beautiful in order to be charitable it is also important to be hospitable hospitable does not mean you take everybody into your house no it is often even comes in the thought often and it goes the charity down to get hospitality means will comes and love house but it said into our heart in the stages or in a way come to the term justice justice is a source of confusion it is not usual not unusual to hear political activists or commentators argue that such a justice can never be in the society except in the court in the legal court we'll find that that is justice they call it we have in the church what is known as the social justice or we have the economic justice we have the equality that is seen here how we can help others and how we can serve others too justice is multifaceted and therefore the number of definitions are given there is retributive justice you might have heard about it uh, in um, the old testament is thrown as a lex talionis that is what eye for an eye tooth for a tooth this is jesus speaks in sermon on the mount this has come from amurabi's court lex talionis if somebody takes the eye of a person in return the other person's eye also has to be removed equal tit for tat has to be done that is retributive retributive justice distributive justice is specifically focus on distribution of resources such as wealth power education there are different theories of distributive justice and but the fundamental idea behind them is all our resources are available for others everything we have is for others we are only the keepers this is what pope francis repeatedly tells us we are keeper of the goods that we are the ones who are to distribute to others there are the segment as three areas of distribution first what are, are the resources being distributed wealth power opportunities second to whom individuals communities cities third by what means are they being distributed equal merit according to the status according to the delineation or the segregation or separation how are you doing it then we have the restorative justice central idea behind the concept of restorative justice is that in order to achieve true and lasting justice the relationship between the victim and the oppressor must be restored this is done a number of ways such as dialogue confession and eventually forgiveness but in the church we are more concerned about the social justice this is related to distributive justice but it is not limited to the distribution of resources everything that we have our talents our abilities everything we have we distribute is of social justice concerned only with social and political and religious structures which is granted for people to have access 
it goes beyond sometimes just to describe the right use of power and in this case as and in this case as abuse of power social justice wrestles the questions about power system within the society and how they affect people social justice is the attempt to fight against injustice we have so many people of our own in the religious structure as christians as persons religious sisters and fathers and brothers are working for social injustices and helping the poor the marginalized that is the way we have make an attempt to overcome the injustice the dalits those who are suffering this creates something a problem for us who belong to the church that to coin the term social justice and it is true of course that the term is often used in different contexts and meanings are vastly different meaning in the in the catholic tradition sometimes the church's teaching do gives us the direct straight line about uh, the social justice starting from the uh, pope leo the 13 we have today so many other ways of understanding it let us reflect again what this justice is first justice is the moral value that consists in the constant and firm will to give their due to god and neighbor this is probably familiar to most of us but the other than legal justice strictly speaking what are the type of justices we have in social aspect the catechism of the church says there are several justice is that which relates to economic exchange between persons and there is the legal place justice that deals with obligation to the broadest level of the community in other words it comes to the social helping of the people in the bible we go one of the well known passages in the bible is coming from prophet amos 524 and the image is given that beautifully he says let justice roll like a river righteousness like never failing stream mind you the words 524 in amos let justice roll on like a river righteousness like a never failing stream this image of justice like a river is different from the modern western conception of justice which is usually conceived as a scale weighing the good and bad objectively detached from the world in the bible therefore justice is not a static or universally applicable ethical theory it is dynamic powerful and continuously flowing reaching out to all to transform people so this is the dynamism we have of the the biblical understanding of justice it's a concept of the bible very complex and multifaceted approach other points we have in justice in justice is mercy some 8510 we see something new mercy and truth meet justice and peace shall embrace this is different than the traditional view of justice here is a justice that is joined with mercy and this mercy extend to the guilty those who do not deserve it and to those who are not even come into the picture or those who are called as a self righteous it is there always available for all and mercy is not something that can be claimed it is something that is generously received as a gift from god god only can give that mercy and he shows us in the new testament how this mercy is given justice is also seen as forgiveness the link between forgiveness and healing is seen in the new testament when jesus heals a person mark 2:1 to 12 forgiveness is linked here also to cleansing You know what? Remember, Mark two one to twelve. The person says, "Your sins are forgiven. You are healed." Forgiveness and healing, they, they they go together, and therefore the charity that Jesus gives is a healing. Forgiveness is the extra expression of the justice that He gives. Jeremiah thirty three eight. He says, "I will cleanse them from all their sin that they have committed, and will forgive their sins of rebellion against me." Thirdly, justice is seen as reconciliation. We reconcile. You know what the meaning of reconciliation? Our easy understanding is the confession. 
it is to accept the other one as if nothing has happened that is to reconcile in the cycle of sin we have the judgment and the reconciliation we accept we integrate with the person and the normal term that we use forgive and forget and we reconcile even the harm that is done towards we forget it and we accept the other person god is the one who forgives us who reconciles us with him he is like a fragrant garden that blossoming flower that lies in his forgiveness in the new testament that we have for the the concept of the central component of christian theology let us see what the new testament tells us the greek word that is used is dikaios which is uh, used about 200 times in the in the new testament alone it is connected with the concept of righteousness just like the hebrew word for justice in the gospels jesus constantly challenged the righteous that's the pharisees and the political people the roman authorities against injustice in the sermon on the mount we see how much of injustice it is done and how that can be healed he continuously challenged the dominant social hierarchy of the time healing and casting out demons on the sabbath day associating with the women fishermen samaritans tax collectors prostitutes and so on it addressing the sinful woman who anointed jesus in luke chapter 7 we see the lord recognizes that the moral failings and social injustices within the society and pronounces the woman forgiven and the implication is that she will sin no more that forgiveness that healing that justice that comes from jesus so we got the last point now the relationship between justice and uh, charity the understanding of justice and charity may be familiar for most of us since we are immersed in that modern understanding the words are constantly used in the catholic church in the from the beginning saint chrysostom says he explains it delicately not to enable poor to share in our goods is to steal from them and deprive them of life mind you not to accept the poor within us that means we are depriving them of a privilege which jesus alone who offers to give to us the goods we possess are not ours it is theirs it's a universal ownership this is what the pope tells us in laudato si we the ownership is universal god created everything for all and that we are there we are possessing them we want to accept them we want to understand them in the second vatican council the demands of justice must be seen as satisfied first of all that it is really due to the justice and it is offered to us as a gift of charity there is also an entire section in the second vatican council on social justice and a number of other paragraphs which deal with the similar truth if we take a step back and see the selected quotations the place it in the context we notice that the largest section of the covering of the seventh commandment what's the seventh commandment you shall not steal those things of a person rightfully uh, as as access to are already theirs we are not supposed to steal them the question whether or not actually they have access to them is a question of justice and of course the virtue of charity compels us christians to work towards greater realization of justice pope benedict xvi in uh, in caritas in veritate he says love caritas is an extraordinary force that leads people to opt for courageous and generous engagement in the field of justice and peace this dynamic of charity received and given is what gives rise to the church's social teaching which is in caritas in veritate that uh, there and uh, it is in re sociale that is social things proclamation of truth as christ's love that is given to us so what are we to make of this modern economic view of the markets are they always we trusted to yield that uh, just outcome it is just now we see that unjust situation that is taking place if only they are allowed to operate freely if you see the supply and demand those who know economics well will understand 
can we leave it to the free market it is generally it is necessary that everyone has justice the poor man is suffering today because of the middle man the justice is not done Char it has become more like a charity they want to serve that is where our role comes as the church people in the market to get people their justice and to serve them in charity so therefore our role of integration is greater special and wonderful the integration of charity and justice takes place in the context of the church the church is a community of believers united in jesus christ to proclaim the mission of proclaiming good news and living in peace and harmony this community indicates a single hearted purpose of baptized person both men and women for the sake of jesus christ the religious persons more than anyone else from form a community and is to remain in love a special union with christ and the religious persons are more than anyone else form a beautiful community community is being united together to understand to share the love to give to the other what they need and support and take care of them the community celebrates they bound uh, the unity through eucharist at the last supper jesus brought the unity he taught them on charity he washed their feet he told them what it is to love he gave them the eucharist he broke one bread and satisfied them fulfilled them he gave them one cup and gave said this is my body this is my blood a community is formed in one bread and one cup through union he told them how to live how to share how to integrate to each other how to support and that is what jesus gives st paul in the speech to the corinthian community you are to share from one bread so there is no division among you so you give what you have to the other and share with the other that is charity and justice therefore positive trends in religious life is manifested in the church a deep hunger towards interiority or spirituality we have the strong sense of communion that we being united thirdly acute awareness of the human rights and justice fourthly we have greater awareness of the need to care for nature so more importantly in the community what we need is to understand take care of others therefore what we need is that that we each one of us are involved with the other caring for the other and accepting the other that is where the nature comes in laudato si becomes a key event for us the nature is given to us to be shared to be understood to be accepted to be lived and that is what is needed for us having studied the concept of charity and justice realistically we may surely have a problem if we really understand it the equity the sharing it becomes leads us into a difficulty i give you a tiny story the china in china there was a very holy man he was good spiritual man at the same time a great philosopher and thinker so much so everybody went to him when they needed some advice from him and they were there close to him the king also went to him for advice ultimately the king said see you're so good why don't you come to my palace and be there as a judge you justice for all you are advising everybody you can do a better job than sitting here far away in the forest in the cave here but rather than you can do it the man said this job doesn't fit me and you won't be happy with me the king insisted and finally the man accepted and he was made the chief justice the first day that came the case came there there was a rich man very rich and he was robbed by a person both came to the court the robber was arrested and he was brought the justice heard the case the verdict from both and said the robber is wrong he will be put in prison for 10 years everybody was uh, happy because the furniture is stolen a lot then look at the man you are the rich man you are robbed you will be given 10 years of sentence too they were shocked and the man started crying he said what wrong have i done he is the one who has wronged me he said 
you have done the wrong because you have taken possession of property which should have been with somebody else which should have been others nobody told you to occupy such a lot of property to done injustice to others so i has just judge you are also being punished naturally if you can say the man lost his job the same day so that's a type of justice we do not want but the man gave the right justice that he gave the same judgment which could be able to help others as that therefore justice refers merely more to the concept of moral right rightness while charity refers to the giving of help to those in need charity deals with the immediate need while justice leans more towards addressing the root of the problem therefore we can summarize what we have said between the relationship with the, with the just four points i will give here first charity is the giving of help to those who are in need while justice is the system which oversees that concept of moral rightness is applied to a situation when someone has become the aggrieved party so follow this charity is giving help and justice is to oversee that the concept of moral rightness is applied to the right situation this is the first second point charity addresses and immediate need people are hungry you need the help and immediate help is given to them but justice is the one goes to the root of the problem it analyzes the root why it happened a person is hungry why it is happening how can that be solved so justice is that charity it goes to the problem itself third charity offers a direct service to those in need while justice focuses on the social change on need that's a immediate thing the the justice is for the future to bring about a transformation fourth charity can be practiced by individuals government and non profit organization while justice is served by the federal courts or the persons in authority would give the justice but individually justice is given by all people in all situation so therefore we need both charity and justice justice is the immediate one charity uh, charity is the immediate effect justice is the prolonged thing that makes a person live a harmonious living therefore in the church and for us in the religious communities it's a community is a harmonious living that is where we persons from different backgrounds come together we understand each other we give ourselves to the other and we serve others without looking for any return without looking for any compensation and we give our energy knowledge whatever we have that is the charity that we do therefore as in paul says it is not merely in money that we give it is our abilities our talents that is charity and the justice is the application the reaching out to everyone and they uh, get involved with the situation now to conclude i don't have much time left now than the time for question answers so what you do is i go back to for francis for francis is the one a person who is giving to us to understand and particularly at this time of corona virus pandemic has come very strongly what exactly has to be done and it is the right time for us he says to encourage new imagination of what is possible in the realism and what the gospel tells us the pandemic has helped people to realize the important or importance of uniting themselves united as a family united as a community to have uh, to search for a sustainable and comprehensive development we cannot afford to write present and future history with our backs to the sufferings of many if we act as one people even in the face of the epidemics uh, will that lie in wait for us we can have real impact what he says is the, this epidemic is not an end we have many more and example he gives is the hunger and the struggle that goes on if you know the realistically our country situation with this 6 months the pandemic that has come 
more than one crore people have lost their jobs. People don't have anything to eat. They're struggling, they're begging. And more struggling are the middle class people. They have no jobs. They can't feed the people. I deal with education and I can say people are taking the children out of the schools and putting in government schools because they have no money to pay the fees. And here our charity comes to understand them, to help them out, to reach out to them, to build them up. And that's what Pope says. Any amount of pandemics may come, but we are there as a solid persons. We have to help. The positive point of this, all this is in this justice and charity situation that we are integrated, we are united, communities are built up. Maybe the reason we could not go out. Maybe the situation we cannot meet people. Social dealing has come down very much. But the, in the long run, there can be serious consequences, harm that can be done because of this situation. But ultimately, that charity is a help. It is an immediate thing. Give the hungry something to eat. Those who are helpless, give them. You know, amount of suicides that have gone on in recent times. In 2019 alone, in India, 138,000 people have committed suicide. It's not a small amount. We hear the farmer's suicide that is there. And where is our charity that comes? So in this situation, for Francis hopes that humanity had developed an antibodies of justice, charity, and solidarity, which faced the temptation to the globalization of indifference. He adds, our situation is like the disciples. First disciple had the tomb. We live surrounded in the atmosphere of pain and uncertainty. They had there, their master was lost for them. They're waiting near the tomb. And that is at this time, we have the situation. They are in pain and uncertainty. The pain and mourning of our people discontents us, hurts us, takes us away. What is, what is our role? Our role, therefore, as people, religious, is the social ministry. It is anchored in prayer. It is the hope that the, the Vatican Council will give us and the peace which Pope John the 23rd will tell us. This is what we are looking for. Now, the ultimate is, I close with it, it is the three aspects which Pope John uh, Paul, Paul the VI will say, the duty of human solidarity first, the duty of social justice, the duty of universal charity, that is essential for us, and this is a blessing that we look for. So thank you. Now I'll close. If you want, I can extend it, but then immediately if you have any questions, you ask.